AI 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 TMA2 Studio Wireless Plus but so they got in touch with me and we're like hey we have this headphone it's modular and would you like to play with it in this new revision I'm like but I haven't played with it in the other revisions so make me up a grab bag I I I I I which actually is rather costly considering and um let's play so what have I got Level, um, all right, this is the headphone I'm currently listening to. Let me undo it. That's a that's a cable I've added, but then we could we could go in here. We could we could do this. We do this, and then we do this and this. I didn't just break anything. This is what you get to do. Actually, I'm gonna unplug this. I was charging it. Okay, 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 okay. Can I finish? Can I finish? Can I finish? Wallpaper. Can I finish? So, oh wait. I wanna, if I'm breaking it down, let's. Let's break it the hell down. So this is an interesting as hell concept because you get, when you go to the website, and this, actually all this stuff is available on Amazon. So I'll be looking at a shit ton of stuff on Amazon. And this is broken because vertical monitor just breaks it. Cause here, watch this, watch the cute animation. Oh yeah, look at that. Did you do a thing? It's doing things, but I can't see it. If you go to the website, you can literally pick you could you, well if we go here you can see the main thing tma2 then there's a tma2 builder then the tma2 wireless then there's tma2 parts and you got all the parts here and this is brilliant this is a legitimately a brilliant concept i kind of wish i would have come up with it and then i would be selling these things so no one has a perfect headphone there is no perfect headphone for you so it makes sense if you're going to make a headphone make a headphone that you could change parts this should be fucking brain easy like oh swappable pads that are easy and we sell a few of them how many of those headphones in this wall and i actually can't recall how many of them have like the velcro that peels the pads on and off and it's like wow what an innovative system the pads are velcroed on for easy changeability and then they don't fucking come out with a different pad so when these were designed they basically the, the way it busts down is you pick the drivers because there's currently three of these. Only three. I believe there's only three. I'm going to double check. Wallpaper. I'm going to double check. We go down. We go individual parts. Yeah, there's only three of these. There's the SO2, which is a punchy sound. The SO5, which is what these are, which is a detailed sound. And then the S10 wireless, which has built-in Bluetooth on it. And then it just does a thing. So you only get to choose those three. And that's fine for now. This company, how much I like this company depends on how many more of these they can produce. Because they don't have an open back one. Mostly, I think, because of the design of everything. They're using a 40 millimeter driver, which is fine, probably because of the mounting system they've come up with for everything. And I only have one set of the drivers here, so I can't really compare and contrast whether the punchy sound one is my favorite or the detailed sound one is my favorite. If you're only going to watch this far into the video, I actually like how these sound. Like, legitimately like how they sound. I think the individual cups themselves are like 90 bucks. So they're spending some money on the drivers and then for the manufacturing of it because it has to be well built. To do what they're doing here with, with modularity, you have to decently build something. So you get to pick from three different drivers. Then you get to pick from, I'm seeing here, five different types of pad. And I have three of those types of pad because I didn't bother asking for I wanted these little on-ears. Like, look, same cup those big ones came off, on-ears, boom, now they're on-ear. A little tiny, like, one thumb hole. We'll get to the mounting system. So you got on-ear microfiber, which is what these are, on-ear protein leather, then over-ear protein leather, then over Alcantara, and then on-ear reprieve. Lightweight, maybe these are the reprieves then. Hold on. You know what? These are the reprieves. It's hard to tell because it's just like, a, eh, that looks like the powder on the reprieve. Okay, so I've got these three, not those two. So I ignore the original two. And then, so they've got pads. I've got a decent amount of pads. I'd like to see more. I'd like to see some bigger angled ones uh, and just bigger. Because, I mean, this says over here, but it's it's a two knuckle. And everyone who knows Zeos knows that if it ain't bigger than a two knuckle, it ain't big enough for Zeos. I should actually get out like a real giant pair of headphones here. Here are the uh, R70X, which are a three knuckle spinner. We put the biggest pads here next to it. It's like, yeah, it's a bigger pad, but it ain't the biggest pad. And you get the little tiny one, which basically fits inside like a donut. So 
again, the fact that this is modular means that if they keep working on things and keep announcing things, I can keep getting things and making more reviews. So pick your cup, which there only really is two. Because forget the wireless one for now. We'll discuss why. You pick your either punchy sound or detailed sound. Then you pick your headband, and there's six headbands. Um, but I'm gonna knock that down to two headbands right now. Because really, there's this slim one, which is just this. It's just a, a piece of like rugged foam on a slightly light, lightly, lighter clamping uh, frame. Then there's this one, which is the rugged high grade nylon. And then there's high comfort PU leather, which I think this is PU leather. This is high comfort PU leather. Guess what? It ain't that high comfort. This is rather stiff foam. And frankly, the, uh, the, the stiffness of the clamp, this one's much lighter and a lighter headband. I would just take this. I'd never even consider this. If you don't see how this works, by the way, we've got uh, 3.5 millimeters on little stretchy bits that just extend down. They run through the top and you buy with that. So this one doesn't have the, the, the uh, stretchy thing. This one's straight. It's much, li it's much lighter. And I will take the lightness over the, the lightness and the thinness over this because, oh, it's got foam in it. These aren't heavy enough headphones to actually pull down to take advantage of this. So maybe if it was microfiber, it'd be better, but I could eliminate all three of those. Those can be gone. I don't have to see those at all. Just the thin one or the wireless one. And that's why they sent it to me. It's like, hey, we have this new headband, which is a motherfucking chonk, by the way. We compare it to the big one. It is chonk. Now compare it to the slim one. And it's like, Jesus, chonk. Um, anyway, there's actually two of those. There's one that does Bluetooth 5, which is $100. And there's one that does Bluetooth 5 and ultra low latency wireless via a transmission unit. So basically, you can get one with Bluetooth for 100 bucks. The actual headband costs 100 for the Bluetooth one, the H06. The H10XO1, I know, it's such a rad name. That costs $180. So to get this is 180 bucks. And I haven't tested it yet. So here's the thing, because I can hit the stop button on the camera and then do some testing and then come back. So it'll be fresh and angry or happy. I don't know, one of those two. So we're gonna test this out. This will do Bluetooth or there's a switch here. Has the same basic thing. It is uh it is heavy. It is it is like a rugged, but heavy. Um we got your 3.5 millimeter top mounts. You've got a switch here. White is this unit. Switch it over to blue. It's Bluetooth. So you don't have to buy the Bluetooth one and this one. If you get this one, you get sort of both. Um this unit here is very strange. It's huge. It's battery powered, or you could just leave it on USB-C. You have one button. You've got a little indicator here of, of power, and that's it. And it's just a 3.5 millimeter input, and it comes with this cable, which is the most adorable thing that looks like it's designed to plug into a headphone out, which makes sense if you're selling this to people who are like, oh, I want to make a wireless gaming headset. They might have that, or they can unscrew this and get their 3.5. And then they'd have a 3.5, and they can plug it into their amp, and they can still control their headphones with their amp. I'm going, actually, you know what? I don't, I hope that the volume is controllable through this. I've got a DAC lined up down there, like a Shelly Labs DAC. I'm going to do this 3.5 directly from a DAC into it instead of using the weird cord through another thing. Um, oh, and the last thing you get to pick, because I'm sorry, this is so monitor focused, we're missing waifu, uh, is one of the wires, which. They're not that bad, 25, 25, 20, 40. The one that looks real nice, the silver one, the straight 1.2 millimeter reflex one looks nice. And then we've got like this style, uh, coiled one was there. This is a $25 cable. I'll complain about this in a second. Got another straight triad hi-fi for 40 bucks. And then these bright fucking green, bright green. So you get to pick and choose bright green, black, all these things. And then you get to assemble your headphone. Now, I'm gonna do my best to try to describe this to you. I've already eliminated a bunch of the headbands. You only really need either this really light one, light clamping one, or let's just take this off the desk, just remove that from your brain. You can do the wires. The wires have a locking mechanism. The way the cups are designed here, let's go over that for a second. So there are these four rubberized 
basically donuts. And their pads have um, what goes in a donut? Cops. These four cops here and these four donuts here. And then there's a notch on the uh, 3.5 on the top and bottom. Uh, this one's labeled red and this one's labeled uh, black. So you can tell the difference. Uh, it actually says L and R on it like that. And one side is designed to have a locking mechanism, which is what all their wires have, is a twisting locking mechanism that goes in and goes like that. And the other side is just a straight 3.5 input for the top of the headset or the headband. I have eliminated the need to buy the wire. If you have an auxiliary cable, or I have this SKW cable, which I got a long while ago, which has that little extra bit there, the little extension, that will I'm looking for the plug on that, that will actually bypass the lock and go in. And then this is just going to pass the other side through whatever headband you're using. Um, so you don't really need to buy the cable with the with the headphone if you don't want to. If you were going to buy one, I'd buy that one that's out of stock. So, because I mean, it's nice. The locking mechanism is nice. It's nice that they didn't make it super fucking proprietary so you can't use a regular one. Let's reassemble. Let's reassemble this right here. Um, you can cut off this little CE tag. I just left it here. Manufactured in China for I uh, serial number zero zero eight three two one dash o three. So you can easily put these on upside down in the wrong way, and left and right is important because the three point five you put into the bottom is going to indicate left, and it's going to pass to the other side. Or you're going to plug it into the other side, and it's going to pass to the other side. You understand? You switch either either side. So let's put this on here, and this has indicators for left and right, although it really doesn't matter. But I guess if you want to use the indicators, you have to find the one that works, and then just go like that. And we can just put our little 3.5 millimeter, and it doesn't lock, it just inserts, and that's it, we're done. Do that on both sides. I don't think I could put it on. Yeah, I can't put it on before I do that. You could actually do it in one foul swoop. Foul swoop, fail swoop? What does that say? I don't understand literature. One foul. So, oh, so the the. It's nice because it can click, pretty solidly, and it just comes off when you want it to come off. The only problem is when you're adjusting this on your head, and this is something I had to learn my myself. You hear that? You hear that loud click? If you go to adjust while it's on your head, you feel or hear that loud click. So it's very positive in the fact that it locks in place, but it's also very loud in that it goes click, click as you put it on. So basically I've reassembled what is considered a headphone. So now we can pick any other pad. Let's put these little stupid ones on, which I don't I don't understand. If you're gonna get, cause here's the thing, the, the headphones are the same size. The, the actual headband and the cups are not changing in the slightest. There's no like delineation for up, down, left, right. You just put the ball, you put the cups in the donuts. There's no indication for left or right. You just do that and they're on there. So what kind of weirdo masochist are you that you like on-ear headphones if they're not KPH 40s? Which these aren't luckily. Um, also, you, you get a nice little red plug on this side, but then when you plug it in, you don't see it. So you now have to rely on the little R there. Ah, uh, uh, I adjusted it. I pushed my thumb on it, went click, and they both like loudly I learned my lesson but I'm like a monkey I don't I need to do it like a couple times so now I'm gonna plug in to the Wa 11 topaz and it doesn't matter if you plug in left or right or right or left because it's gonna automatically take whichever signal and move it to the other side now there is legitimately like this is a great way to show an example of what a pad can do because these little pads are like warmth and they're like smothering. Like, I don't like these headphones. I don't like them with these pads. We've got a decent bass kick, but it feels like I'm being squeezed. They're not, it's not, it's not. These are not my, not my choice, not my pad. That's the off vocal version. I want the full on vocal version. Hold on. There we go. Hiya. End of One Punch Man. So let's just undo that and just grab them and pull them off. It's, I can't even imagine how hard it was to figure out a system that you could yank a pad on and off and on and off and on and off a hundred times, not have it wear out and not have it damage anything. And I think these rubber donuts with the cops on them is just, 
Brilliant. Now, I can't tell you which one between these two I like more. And there's little notches on these because these are larger pads. They obviously go over everything. Not really increasing the dimensions of the headphone except for maybe that much. So again, why did you get those little on-ear pads? I don't understand why you're a psychopath. But these will slide on. Actually, there is a seam on the bottom or the top, depending on which way you want to put it. But now I've got these big pads on there and we could left. Okay, now we finally step back and we can actually listen to music. Whew. So I've eliminated the little pads and I've eliminated all the headbands, but the super thin one and the Bluetooth wireless one, which we're gonna test out in a second. I've almost eliminated the wires, but I think we still need a set of wires. So now these headphones, All right, one little, little little caveat, because this is not an official wire, it pulls down just a little bit and it goes to mono. And I had to like squeeze it up there. So I just, I hate, all right, I'm time to ramp to about the wire. I fucking hate coiled wires that are built like this. I don't mind coiled wires. I used a Sennheiser 280 Pro for years. Years was my, was my daily driver, but it went this far after the coil before I plugged into my headphone and it went this far before it plugged into the wall. So what the flying fuck is it just either give me a straight cable or give me a coiled KB cable KB. <laughs> just don't give me a straight cable that then decides for a foot and a half. It's, it's a coiled cable. Give me the entire thing. Coil it to here and make the coil slightly longer because this is just annoying. I understand if you're a DJ and you got like plug it into the board and route it around and then this is the only part that's actually being pulled. But then this part is just, it's too far away. It needs to be, I want shorter cable. I want to put my headphones down and have it go whoop or cording into nothingness. All right, let's plug this in. Doesn't matter what side. Remember, it doesn't matter what side. Where can I put this? Right there, fine. Now we won't have any problems. I want to adjust it again. I want to adjust it again. You got to take it off because that click, <sighs> click's going to bother me. For a century. Yes, I'm listening to Fall Out Boy for a second. All right, I changed it. Now I'm listening to Miss Piggy from the Muppet movie. They present wonderfully. If you count this as a $90 headphone, which it isn't because you're going to buy all the other accessories, but for just the drivers playing, oh, this is a lovely closed back headphone. It's not overly bassy. It's not overly trebly. It doesn't hurt to listen to. There's decent soundstage once you get away from these little don't. Can't have too many donuts. These are not donut pads. Those are like Popham's pads. Let's get away from those pads and get to those or the Alcantara, which we'll get to in a second because these are the ones I really want to listen to. These have better bass response. These make everything a little bit more warm and present. I was prepared entirely to hate these, by the way. I was like, this modular headphone shit, it's not going to sound good, but they've actually done a decent job. And the only... Ooh, dead mouse. So there's enough bass knock. And keep in mind, I'm using like an $1,100 amplifier to power them right now. Just point that out. There's just enough bass knock that I'm like, okay. It's there. It's These are not bassy headphones by any means. Maybe they could change that with a different model. Or they could change it with a different pad. But for now, these are not a bassy headphone. Look how easy it is to swap pads. God, there's so many headphones I could just use this sort of system. All right, and I just squee, turn, and squeeze. Little, it's a, it might be a little bit less bass, but they're more focused with the Alcantara. The Alcantara is my pick. You can get these if you want actual more neutrality in the sound, but the fun comes with the Alcantaras. Am I cooking this on high gain? Dude, these are, that's max. I mean, it's not balanced out, the balance outs. Anyway, balanced out, balance out, but I'm cooking these maximum on high gain. And they make me dance. That was the, the thing I discussed in that one um, IM video. Was like, look, 
whatever. We got technology? Oh, great. You have to go to Mars to get it? Fucking fantastic. I don't care. Do the headphones make me want to dance? You made a good headphone if I want to dance in it, and I want to dance in these. Or I want to sing about the Hakuna Matata. So, with the lightest clamp headband, the clamp is perfect. I, I don't feel uncomfortable with this at all, even though there's no padding here, but like there's a little bit of foam. It's fine because they don't weigh much. They sound fucking good, like good. Like I don't think this is gonna knock any like $500 dedicated clothes backs off my wall, but I don't hate them. And if you're going for this sort of system, you'd better not hate them. So I recommend these, I would recommend these. Now here, if we go to Amazon, uh, you can get the full sets. I don't know why that one is is Fat Putin. You know, the, you know the GIF I'm talking about. It's extra fat there. $350 for the wireless. So that's the wireless one. These, however, right there, the Studio XE clothes back, I'm assuming the driver cost shouldn't matter, 180 So that means these are a $180 headphone right now. $180 headphone sounding like this, fucking thumbs up. Now the question comes is, is it worth it to make something that sounds like this wireless? And not just Bluetooth wireless, chonky headband, portable, low, zero latency. I think it's going to be zero latency. So now I'm going to stop the camera. I'm going to take apart what I love, put this shit on it, and we'll see if I still even like it. All right, so Bluetooth mode. Start with that. We'll do different modes. I haven't took this up yet. I wanted to make sure this worked. Let me just double check something here. Yeah, it is not running LDAC. That is a thing. It would be telling me it was running LDAC. It was running LDAC. Um, however, it has officially the best range of any Bluetooth device I've ever used. I left my phone right here, and then I walked to the back of the basement, like the complete diagonal opposite of the basement, and it was like, it cut out like twice when I was like leaning my head into the speakers of the, of the little Narbert there. And I'm like, oh, I gotta bring this shit upstairs. And I wanted to get another Bluetooth thing for a thing. I'm gonna do a thing. It cut out once in my kitchen, like up those stairs through to the back. Of, it's just like Bluetooth straight through the walls. It's like, because the antenna is your entire head. Your whole head becomes the antenna. And it's like, oh, range, I got that. Uh, music sounds still as good. I mean, LDAC would be nicer. I know LDAC is like a next level up, but considering Bluetooth is sort of like an extra you get on this, I'm fine with that. I'm fine. I've got the little little thing here to indicate left and right. Um, the buttons work as you'd expect them. They're not labeled. There's a little blue light there, which isn't obnoxious or terrible. Or I'm like, fuck blue LEDs. It's like, it's fine. It indicates we're in Bluetooth mode. It should be blue. All right, there are some instances where a blue LED is fine. Not many, but some. Um, you turn it on by pressing and holding the center one. You hold the both top and bottom to get into pairing mode. This becomes volume up. This becomes volume down. You double press for next track. You triple press for last track. And that's, that's how all Bluetooth things should work. X Duo, who doesn't know how to make that happen. Um, Hold on. I want to make sure music is... Oh, it's a, it's a quiet ass song. Hold on. See so, you yeah, now. Lower volume, and it does lower it on your phone. So you can control it on the phone or on the unit. Double press. Different song comes on. It's great. Works great for Bluetooth. Works great. It's heavy as fuck. Like, if you balance it right, if you get it right in the top of your head, and I'm still wearing the GoPro. I didn't take the GoPro off because I live with the GoPro. So I've got a I've got a strap above my head. So this was sort of like, this is a nice grippy rubber and it just didn't move. If this slid forward or backwards and I turned my head, I feel like the weight of it, because it is, it, you know what? I'm just so used to the lightweight one that like I say it's heavy, but it's like, it's manageable. You might benefit from Dakoni Nuggets. The uh, link to Coney Nuggets in the um, description. You know, I'm still enjoying the way these sound. I'm obviously sticking with these pads. The clamp, it, honestly, here's another thing. The clamp should probably be a little bit higher if you're going to be wandering around with these out in a, like the real world. 
So I don't mind the clamp being a little greater than it is with the, the lightweight one. But now the real question is, would you really want to spend money on this instead of keeping the headband you already like and not getting any of these? I went and gathered up all the Bluetooth things that I love in the house. We got the Up4, we got the Audirect, we got BTR7, BTR5, Quidelix, and the Death on Ray Pegasus. Wait till I get to this. Oh, it's so good and bad at the same time. Anyway, so those are all the Bluetooth options. I won't, I'll won't. i link to like one or two of those, but not all of them. So you could either keep a normal wire and get a Bluetooth thing or make it truly wireless. And by the way, it retains the plug. Like I, if you shut this off, it just makes cute, makes cutesy little sounds. You shut that off and then plug your wire back into it. She still works like the headphone. So this is this is one of those few headphones that can transition seamlessly from a wired headphone to a wireless simply by unplugging it and turning on the unit. That's madness. I would love... See, that's the thing. One of my favorite headphones. Right? Clips HP3. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. It's almost modular. Look at the magnetic. Ah, oh, look. Ah, oh, it's so pretty. But when I want to take them out and about, it can't because you just you can't. You have to take your wires. You got to plug it in. You get... If this was a little bit thick, if they did, if Klipsch did to the, to this here, just made this a because I'm sure Klipsch could make it real thin, like they have the thousands of millions of dollars to do that. They just made like a control module. But then again, this is also plugged in an individual sides and have a wire running. You'd have to do things, but there are headphones out there that I would love to just be like, I'm home, plug it in, got my tube amps, got my fucking A90D, got all these things going on. But now it's time to go shopping. Unplug, boop, boop, wireless on, go. This can do that. Now, that's just the Bluetooth aspect of it. Now we have to worry about the actual this thing, this thing, which I will test it out of this, and then I will test it with a dedicated DAC out and see what the differences are. Um, it should still use everything else. I just have to flip the switch down here from the blue indicator to the white indicator, and then turn it on. It should automatically pair. We're good to All right, with the uh, report of the week. So, um, wireless works. It's about 60% of the range of the Bluetooth because it's 2.4 gigahertz, like an old uh, phone. Quality-wise, as far as this sending quality audio, we're... <sighs> We're about the same as the Bluetooth. If the Bluetooth was LDAC, I would say the Bluetooth sounds better. Since the Bluetooth was probably aptX, maybe not even aptX HD, I don't know. Even if it was aptX HD, that's fine. This is Bluetooth 5, it's fine. Um, re roughly similar quality. You're obviously tethered to this box that you have to feed a signal to. So I tried with this and it was fine. I thought this sounded better, plugging it in directly from a DAC output. Then I pause the music and I'm hearing this like fluttering and I'm like, what the hell is that? Let me see if I can raise the volume, hold on. All right, yeah, let's see if I can get this against the microphone on the camera. What the hell are these microphones in this camera? How does it even work, GoPro? Anyway, I don't know if you could hear that, it was like It sounds like some sort of like not seismic anomaly, but like a, like I'm in like, like why are there so many moths flying around? And I'm like, well, maybe it's the DAC causing this. So I turned on the LA90, which is also to that same DAC, and there's no sound out of that. And then I went, all right, we got to see if it's this specific output. So I whipped out, here's some blast in the fucking past, the Oppo Hot 2, because it's literally the only device I could think of at the moment's notice that you can just do that too. Plug in a source 3.5, output a headphone 3.5. Um, it actually still has charge, two bars. And I had to, so I could have used these headphones, but I just swapped to the Rhodes. I know the Rhodes are super efficient. And dead silent. Play music. Otis Taylor's playing. FK Twigs is playing here. I'll even put it on high gain. Pause it again. Raise the volume. I could, there's a similar hissing, 
but it's so I'm at maximum murder volume here. So the fact that let me shut you off. Thank you, baby. You, you have done work. You haven't done work in a while, Oppo Hot Two. I love you. Um, it's weird because it doesn't happen when I plug this into a source like this. Plug that in. No matter what I do, pause, play, raise the volume. It's quiet. Plug this unit into this noisy. But that being said, I still think giving it the full voltage is beneficial because you can now control the. You don't have basically two volume controls. You have this one and the one that's on it. Uh, for gaming, as far as latency, like I was next tracking, like skip skipping through, and I know Bluetooth has latency, and this has none. It's, it might as well be wired. It's just this unit to this unit, and you can leave it unplugged because it's fully bright. I don't know why you wouldn't leave it plugged. And they could have made this just a plug-in unit, but they made it a battery unit for some reason. Which, by the way, the plastic on the like the plastic on this is premium. The plastic on this, you could just see it looks like it's been through hell, and I've had it for like, I've literally touched this for maybe 12 minutes in its entire life. And we've got like a worn spot there. It's trying to be the same rubber eyes. Like this looks like it's been beat up. It's fine. It works. Um, I don't know if like standing it up will help the the range, but. Good concept. I like the way this functions. This will absolutely... See, wait, now I'm starting to hear... Oh, wait. Now I'm hearing a hissing just straight from these headphones. Just very quiet, but it's there. So there is a noise when you're using it in this 2.4 mode. If you're using it for this mode, you're not using this device and the 2.4 gigahertz sender because you're listening to music and quality. You're using this because you want zero latency. You're using this for gaming. You can absolutely 100% game in these. Find your pad of choice. That's another thing I want to discuss about. I was gonna, then we end this video, which is now. Are you gonna build one of these and have multiple things hanging around? Think about it for a second. Because I I put together basically my perfect unit with the lightweight headband and these cups, or these uh, pads, and the cups are the only ones I have right now, so I don't really know if I'd swap back and forth. But how often am I going to actually go and whip it out and be like, oh, today's Saturday, definitely got to switch out to these pads with this headband. It's like I could see it fitting certain functionalities, but if you just built these... Like what I'm holding right now. Yes, it's got the big chonky headband that's a million fucking inches thick, but you still can plug into it. So if I'm gonna go out and about, am I really gonna spend the time to put, or if I come home from using these out shopping or at, in the bus or at my job, am I gonna come home and be like, all right, it's time to now unplug everything. I mean, it's not hard to do. You literally just grab the plug with your fingertips and then just pull. But am I going to go through the process of doing this every time I want to switch from the wireless headphone to the wired one? And then I'm going to be like, all right, check this out. No, nope, there it is. Okay. If you're good, if you've been doing this for a while, you could do that and that, and you got to get it going on. That's, that's, and then you have to look, now I'm looking for the locking mechanism. I guess there's like bigger ridges here than there. And not really. Because you can't put it in until you put it in. It's, it's a little bit of a, it's a, it's just a little bit tricky. Okay, now I've made it. It's super easy. 12 seconds. Are you going to do it? Do you know how lazy you are? I know how lazy you are because I know how lazy I am. And I'm twice as lazy as normal people. So even if this was, you know, half as hard, it'd still be fucking still. It's still going to make people be like, oh, I got to fucking change it out. It is so much more comfortable with this configuration than the heavy duty headband. You might be able to stretch this. Actually, you know what? Hold on a second. I gotta see something now. Because I may, yep, yeah, you know what? I didn't even notice it. Because I, I was thinking about this one. High clamp, less clamp. So this actually has, I've been using this the most so it's stretched a little bit. But the wireless one actually has less clamp by default because it's so bulky. So this one might stretch and have a nice easy time, but this one already starts a little stretch. It gets stiffer as you go, but actually that's a pretty that's pretty good design right there. They, they took that into account, that this one's thin and light, make it clamp more and then stretch. This one literally fucking can't. There's a got, there's most of this can't bend because there's electronics and batteries in it. So I don't, 
hate the clamp. It's just, it's a lot more bulk and am I willing to switch it? So overall, I give the III a B plus. Um, they need more cups. They need more of these. They need to sell more of these. I want to see an open back. I want to see like a super base mod. Before they have seven wires and nine headbands, the this, the actual driver unit, is what matters. Because I found the pads I like. Now, whether the pads I like will work on the next revision of tuning. If it's an open back, it might change everything entirely. Which just means spending more on more pads and more things. I probably won't need wires. I probably won't need headbands. I might get two of the, like, the lightweight headbands because they're so cheap. Just so I can have, you know, them... Because what's the point of having some of these sitting around if I get two sets? All you need is this, and you can get an aux cable from Amazon or anybody, and you have two headphones now. And then why are you getting modular headphones in the first place? Because you would just be swapping physical entire headphones. So I like this concept. In fact, I had even, when I was building my Grado uh, hemp mods, they're the hemp's over there. When I built the, the thing out of the high humans, I'm like, I can make a headphone model where you modulate pop in the drivers for different tuning and sound. But then I realized that's great, except you need to deal with the pads again. Because now pads are the final frontier in tuning. Dakoni's got the market on lock. Dakoni and Yaxi and those places that make fucking dedicated pads, they're, they got the best job in the world. Because no matter who makes a headphone, Sennheiser, there might be a pad that improves it, except for Sennheiser. Except for Sennheiser, where they put some sort of fucking patent lock on it. But the final tuning of a headphone is always the pads. So they come out with two different drivers. And if you love your Alcantara pads with the O5s and you get the O2s, which are the which are the bassy ones or the um, hold on. What is the actual description of it? Uh, up, 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 up. The punchy sound. You get the punchy sound ones, it may not work with your favorite pad. You might be reduced to swap into something else. And in which case you're gonna have different cups with different pads on them. And then at that point, if you have two headbands, you've just made two headphones. So if you're fucking dead set on having one headphone, then you can do this and mix and match. But if you ever want to expand on their collection, you're going to end up with two. And then there was no point in having a modular headphone because now look how much fucking desk space is taken up. It's not simpler, it's more complicated. Although I do like the wireless functionality. This needs to be... Do they sell it? Like, all right, a real quick question because now, thank you, III, you did great. I actually enjoy your sound and I probably will use you Although I'm going to try to use it probably with this and one of these. But now back to one of these, any one of these. They make these Bluetooth, right? Do they make this for normal headphones? Like a, a send and receive. Um, do they only make that for like shitty TV, like old people watching TV? Because if you could have a zero latency wireless adapter that would go on, I don't know, another type of headphone... Maybe that clips up here. I'd love to review that. Anybody know of that? Anybody know a thing that does that? That's actually quality? Or even better, even better, digital in, digital out, and I could put a little DAC on it, a little USB, plug a USB into here. So act as a USB DAC, boom. Make that the low latency wireless shit we're talking about. But anyway, thank you to III. They're doing good work here. I just want to see more of these but at the same time, more of these means more people buying more of them, and then you're going to have enough to just buy a $20 fucking headband. $25? I forget what this is. Not expensive. And if you have a headband for every pair of cups you have, you have multiple headphones, and you're not having a modular headphone, unless you can mix and match, but you're all going to buy the same one that's your favorite, and then you maybe have one of the wireless ones. The wireless one does a good job. It's still on, by the way. Um, let's turn that off. See, it's a little white light. It's blue light when it's Bluetooth, and white light when it's 2.4 thinking. Uh, uh, it lost connection. That means it'll auto turn off. Excellent. Anyway, I'm done. I'm Zio Spentera. Um, links to this stuff in the description. Oh, I brought these out. The Z12 Gold Editions are out now. If you missed the opportunity to buy the original Z12 IEMs, the Let's Sure S12s that I remodified with a little more bass um, in red and blue, if you missed that, well, they'll never be back in red and blue, because that's the special sets. The Gold Editions, which is gold and black, or gold and gold, or black and black, are available right now on HiFiCo. 
So go check them out. I will link to them. Actually, they're there and on Amazon. Both links to see us. Um, Wallpaper Waifu, who just happened to match the colors of everything that IAIA is doing, is available in the description. Uh, if you can't get the wallpaper hoard to work, I will redo the wallpaper hoard. It's coming. Uh, I also, you could find my imager if you really want to look for all those pictures. Although giving out my imager seems too easy. Isn't it too easy? It might be too easy. Um, yeah, done with that. Patreon, subscribe, start support this channel. Uh, see reviews early, participate in yard sales. Yard sales go from the first to the 10th of every month. If you live in the USA or Canada, I ship to you for free, whatever your bid turns out, because the bid starts at zero. If you live outside of the United States and Canada, I pay half shipping. So if you want something, let's say this or all of this, and you paid $100 for it, and the shipping's $100, you pay 50, I pay 50, you paid $150 for all of this. Um, listen to the losses sound demos, and for $10 a month, you get into a pri behind the scenes private Telegram chat, where you get to ask me any questions you want, uh, participate in the Swap Meet channel that's there for buying, selling, and trading gear, and ask other people questions, and you're really part of a little family, and I'll answer you on my phone, you live on my phone. You join the $10 tier, you live on my phone. You wanna live on my phone? It's kinda cramped in there, but it's got a lot of white foods, so. Good balance. Anyway, I'm done. Thank you, I, 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 and I'm um, shutting this shit off now. Now, bye. Before I stop this video, which I've already stopped this video, I just want to point one thing else out. I saved it for this reason. Um, every one of these things, every single one of them, came in its own individual plastic bag. Like every single pads, set, and headband and just more wires. Like it was just obsessively packed. And it was like a four, 40 minutes to unbox it all. And like even the pouch, even this pouch, which I didn't even talk about, which is actually relatively nice. It's like a, like a gym bag. The, even the pouch came in its own pouch. So just be prepared to recycle or pollute the seas because there's so much going on bag wise like it was just it was an endless stream of bag ear pads and, and things so yeah no that's it so now i can throw these all away i don't think they're i don't know if there's recyclable are they recyclable this bag is made from 100 percent recycled plastic which means i don't think you can recycle it again i'm not 100 percent sure we'll double check and then i'll dispose of these